Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Side Hustle Club podcast. Today, we are going to talk about podcasting. And if you've decided to click into this episode, then that suggests to me that you've either already started your podcast or you're thinking of starting one soon. And if this is you, then something tells me that you also have a desire to become known for your story, your ideas, your perspectives. And by sharing all of this through a podcast, you know that this can pave way so that one day you can really attract some really cool opportunities down the line. For example, maybe some of you, you have a three-year dream of creating speaking opportunities, but maybe you feel like you just don't look like a speaker and maybe you're you're feeling like, oh, I'm just too introverted and you feel like it could be possible maybe 10 years, but maybe not three right? But despite all of that, you always have an opinion and you always had something to say. And despite not being the loudest in the room, you know that when you're on stage, people shut up and they listen, right? Or maybe your dream is to create a group coaching program that attracts best fit clients from all over the world. Or maybe you really want to have a really popular podcast where you get to bring on really cool guests who are genuinely honored to be on your show. Or maybe you want to build community and host in-person events, right? So whatever your dream is for the long term, the common thread that underlies all of these dreams is that you can actually start laying down the foundation for each of them right now, step by step. And now the question is, oh, but how can I make this happen? Well, it all starts with building a body of work that lets you become known for your unique thought leadership, your story, and how amazing you are at what you do. And this is exactly the work that we will do inside the Thought Leader Club. So for some of our clients inside the Thought Leader Club, compressing the timeline to their three-year goals will mean starting and growing a weekly podcast this year. Or for others, it will look like a blog, a YouTube channel, or weekly social media content on the internet. The vehicle is ultimately going to depend on the client's strengths and preferences as a content creator, but all of us inside, we share the same goal, which is to become known for our unique thought leadership and to build our career as a thought leader. And our first ever cohort is starting on November 1st, 2023. So for all of the exact details, you can actually hop on over to CherylTheory.com slash program. And this is also where you can submit your application to join the first round of the Thought Leader Club and also to book a discovery call for us to discuss how exactly this program can support your 2023 and 2024 goals and also how building a body of work and becoming known for your unique thought leadership will fit into your three-year vision and goals. Now, in this particular episode, we are going to speak specifically to those of you who want to start or grow your podcast in 2023 or 2024. And in this episode, I want to address some of the most common challenges for podcasters. So whether you're planning to do an audio only show or a video podcast show, how to create the the, the time and energetic capacity to create a weekly episode is Honestly, like it is one of the biggest question mark for a lot of podcasters, especially on top of everything else you have going on in your business, career, and personal life. So I want to talk about topics like minimizing your editing time, how to write your episode scripts quickly, and also overall just how to think more about managing your time and energy. So without further ado, let's dive into the topic for today. Okay, so for the first tip that I want to share, let's kick off with something that's really like action focused. Okay. <laughs> so what I'm about to say is super like specific and tangible, and I highly, highly recommend it, which is to get a really solid webcam, record your video and audio simultaneously with Zoom, and record in a way that does not require any editing or minimal editing at most. So let's break this down. So first, let's talk about why I use Zoom to record my video podcasts. And it's because Zoom will save your recording both as a video MP4 file and also an audio MP3 file. So 
one recording will like give you the two files separately, right? And the reason why I use Zoom as opposed to something like QuickTime, which is another software available on your computer, is because Zoom actually lets you pause the recording and resume recording at any time, multiple times. Now, I will just add a quick disclaimer and say that I have not done any research on whether there might be other softwares that lets you do something similar. I'm pretty sure they do exist. Um, and yeah, I'm pretty sure that they, they will offer similar features and will allow you to pause recording and resume recording. But I personally suspect that for most of us, we already use Zoom in some capacity and we probably already have Zoom downloaded on our computers. So for me personally, as a solopreneur, ease of access and keeping my expenses as lean as possible are honestly factors that do matter to me, right? So that's why I personally opted for Zoom as the software of choice to record my video podcast episodes, which is also why I suggest getting a really good webcam. And the one I currently use is by the brand Lumina, L-U-M-I-N-A. And the reason why uh, I suggest a webcam is because most likely the existing webcam on your laptop is not the best, right? So I definitely suggest um, getting a uh, a webcam as opposed to like an actual camera because it's just a much more cost-friendly option, but it still gives you better quality than what you would originally get from your laptop webcam alone. Now, that being said, one downside that I found when it comes to using Zoom is that Zoom will do this thing where it decreases your video quality. So the MP4 file that is saved, it will have a slightly reduced video quality compared to what you would think, even if you are using a nice webcam. But for me, this isn't a big enough of an issue to reconsider another recording mechanism or another recording software. But, you know, of course, if video quality is something that is really important to you, then you might want to research other options that won't compress your video quality and still lets you record both video and audio at the same time. Okay, so now that we got the tech out of the way, let me share how I record in a way that doesn't require any editing afterwards or like very, very, very minimal editing if I do make like major mistakes in the recording process. So <laughs> this is going to sound super... <laughs> Fancy climatic, but I promise it's going to be a game changer for those of you who are podcasters listening to this. Okay, so <laughs> when I'm recording, I will first record maybe two or three paragraphs, meaning I will literally read my script out loud and then I will pause, like literally hit the stop recording button. And then I will drink water, breathe, swallow my saliva, fix my hair. And then I will press the recording button again and resume recording. I'll probably pause for like a second and then I speak, right? And, and that's it. That's how I record my podcast episode. And the, the most important thing I want to highlight here is that I take a lot of mini breaks during a recording. But the breaks, like in total, they don't take up that much time. Like for example... A 30-minute episode, like the actual final published length, it will take me maybe a maximum of 40 minutes to record. And 10 minutes out of that 40 minutes are like break time, right? And taking breaks actually allow me to, quote unquote, maintain my energy throughout my recording. Because one of the biggest concerns that I've heard from fellow podcasters is that they struggle to come across as enthusiastic or high energy for their entire episode. And I found that when I take breaks in the recording, it's a lot easier for me to maintain that energy throughout the recording process. And another reason why this approach has been really helpful for my podcast episodes is because it creates these very intentional pauses. So a common misconception that tends to come up whenever I share with uh, fellow podcasters that I, I do this pausing approach is that people will then be worried about like, oh, but won't that create like really long, awkward pauses, right? And then they 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 will think about like, oh, like, do I need to... um 
Because like for people who try out this approach, a mistake that they tend to make is that they'll immediately like start to speak. Like right after they hit the resume recording button, they will like start speaking right away. But what that as a result happens or creates is that um it, that the pauses are so short, it almost sounds like a, a run-on sentence, right? Like, so sentences will then like merge together and sound like one run-on sentence, right? Or one other thing that tends to um, happen is that people will try this uh, pausing approach, but then they'll actually go edit the episode afterwards and shorten the pauses even more because they there there's this general misconception I find that pauses doesn't sound good to the listener. But the thing is, in my honest opinion, pauses in your your episode, in your speaking, in your recording is not a bad thing at all, especially when you intentionally add a longer pause at transition points between different sections or like different key points of the episode. So one thing I would actually recommend, and I, I used to do this a lot before I now it has become a, a very natural habit is that I would literally suggest in your script, like write down pause, like like literally reminders to pause when you're speaking later on, when you're recording the episode, right? Because honestly, like we as human beings, we naturally speak with pauses between our sentences and when we jump from point to point, right? So if anything, having a longer pause actually adds to the audio experience for the listener because it doesn't come across as you speaking like one long run-on sentence, right? And the the pauses that separate the sentences or key ideas or key passages or key sections, it actually is just much more helpful that I find it's much more helpful when it comes to the listener processing the ample amounts of information that you're throwing at them in, in, in an episode, right? So to summarize the first tip, it is to get a really, really good webcam, record your video and audio simultaneously through Zoom, and record in a way that does not require editing. Sounds good? Awesome. So now let's move on to tip number two, knowing your scripting style and practice your speed and efficiency at writing your scripts. Okay, so to start, I want to talk about a really common concerns that podcasters tend to have, which is oftentimes writing a script for your podcast episode, it can feel like such like a long and big task. Like in your head, you already plan to block out time throughout your week to work on your script. But when the time gets closer and closer and closer to actually sit down and write, you feel so much friction. And This friction can feel like such a big hurdle, so much so that you don't even get any words on your Google Doc, right? So in an effort to help you decrease that resistance or inertia or friction when it comes to writing your episode scripts, I want to first have a conversation about what are some scripting styles or options that are available to you. And then I want to talk about some more specific tips related to speeding up your writing process. So for me so far, there has been four different podcasting scripting styles that I personally have tried out. And as I'm about to share some of these styles, I want to invite you to consider which style or combination of styles might be your preferred way to scripting. Okay. So option one is fully typed out paragraphs. And I find that Although this option is definitely the most time consuming because you're literally typing on like full on sentences and paragraphs, I find that this style is best for podcasters who are either number one, not that confident with speaking off the cuff and or number two, they identify as good writers. So for me personally, I actually script out like word for word, paragraph for paragraph, most of my solo episodes. Okay, now option two, are bullet points or just writing out the key points. So kind of like just a general outline, right? And I find that this option is best for those who naturally have a knack for speaking on the spot and they really enjoy the fluidity of not having a fully written script. And it's also really great for those who don't necessarily identify themselves as a good writer, but they still need a tiny bit of structure. So for me, I like to do more bullet points like outlines 
for my bonus Q&A podcast episodes, which actually leads me to my third uh, suggestion slash option that I want to share, which is Q&A style. So for some people, they're able to respond really well to questions or prompts, right? So they, they tend to get more creative or they're able to create more quickly and flow, like get into flow more when they have something that they're responding to, like a question, right? So if that's you, then consider structuring your script or your whole episode in a Q&A format. So whether you gather questions from your audience or you literally make up your own questions, you can actually write a script by questions, like questioning yourself and answering, responding to those questions. And finally, option number four is repurposing parts of your script or the whole script from other places. And this is something that I do for a lot of my episodes, which is where I'll take an Instagram post or an Instagram story or an email that I recently wrote. And then I'll literally like copy paste the entire like Instagram post, the written part, and then I'll paste it into my scripts. I've also repurposed uh, past worksheets and resources I've created. And I've also repurposed past podcast episodes. Like I'll literally like go back like maybe 30 episodes ago and like take a look at it and then copy and paste chunks of that past episode into my current script that I'm currently writing, right? So there's been a lot of episodes on this podcast that have been repurposed from either shorter pieces of content or maybe even past, past, past episodes on the show. And I only would have to then write fresh new content for just parts of the episode. And most of the time I would write, um, like most of the time when I use this approach, maybe I prefer like no more than 50% of my episode is repurposed and I would still make an effort to write 50% new content. So with all that being said, now after you've had an inkling of which style or combination of styles might work best for your content creation skills and your natural communication strengths, the next step is to, over time, practice getting faster and faster and faster at your preferred scripting style. So there's actually two particular tips I want to offer in regards to this. So first, I want to share a pretty recent anecdote. So actually, for the script of episode 137 of the Side Hustle Club podcast, I actually wrote like basically the entire script for the episode while sitting in a very stuffy, very packed food court inside a, a, a mall, like a shopping mall in Vancouver, Canada on a busy Saturday because... I had literally just gotten my hair done at a hair salon nearby the mall, and I had some time to kill before meeting my friend for dinner. So I sat my ass down at the food court and I started to, ta -ta 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 -ta, right? So that's the first thing, which is you can create from anywhere and everywhere, right? And just a quick shout out to uh, past Cheryl back in 2019, 2020, 2021, when I was still side hustling. I would literally record video Instagram stories in public. But anyway, so this skill of being able to create content from anywhere and everywhere, it goes hand in hand with the second thing, which is the skill of being able to generate your ideas and get clear on what you want to talk about quickly so that you can not only type from anywhere and everywhere, but you can actually also have things written down on your Google Docs or your notes app or wherever you're, you're scripting on, right? Because here's the thing. When it comes to the podcast episode scripts that have been the easiest and fastest for me to write, they are hands down the ones that were inspired by a recent event or a personal experience rather than the episodes where I was like super concerned with, oh, what would a coach in my niche talk about? Or how can I make sure that this gives value to my audience? Because the more I try to like, box myself into what I think I should be talking about, the harder content became. So that's exactly what happened for episode uh, 137 for the scripts of that episode, because for that episode, I was simply writing down my reflections of something that recently happened. I was writing down my observations around not only what happened recently, externally, like what were the things going on externally, but also what were the thought process and emotions that were coming up for me internally 
And I was adding on additional lessons and takeaways that I wanted to offer the audience based on the things that were happening both around me and within me as well. And all of the things that I was writing down for this episode, they were immediately accessible to my brain because I was literally leveraging information that was already inside my brain and they were recent, right? So maybe another way to describe what I'm trying to say here is document something really recent. And when you can combine these two skills, so number one, the skill of being able to write and create from anywhere, and number two, the skill of being able to recount and share about something that happened really recently, you then start to write faster and faster. So those are some major pointers I want to offer when it comes to scripting. Okay, now for tip number three, similar to knowing your scripting style, I also want to talk about knowing your overall work style and how it relates to your energy level. So a common question that I get from people is, how are you so productive? And honestly, I would like used to low-key like dread that question because I'm just like, oh, I I just work quickly and uh, I, I don't know. Like, I guess I'm just efficient. But Now, like with hindsight, I can see that a huge contributor to my quote unquote productivity is that I work according to my energy levels. So after talking with a lot of clients and a lot of peers in the industry, a lot of entrepreneurs, I've observed, generally speaking, two energy work styles. Okay, so And I just want to make a quick note and say that like I'm making this phrase up, but maybe there's a more scientific way to describe this thing that I'm about to talk about. But just for the purpose of this conversation, I'm just going to refer to this as energy work styles. Okay, so for the people who, um, basically the first type of work style I've observed is the, the people who work well in intense sprints or bursts. Right. So, for example, maybe they will do a full day of content batching or they'll literally book all of their client coaching calls within like two days of the week, while other people, including myself, prefer to work in many, many like little or shorter time chunks. And these chunks are spread out throughout the week. And for me, I just find myself getting depleted easily. So if you ask me to do like four hours of back to back Zoom calls, I will like perish. Right. And also, like I'm I'm gonna refuse to spend even three consecutive hours working on like a podcast episode. Right. So instead, here's what I found works best for me. For example, when it comes to creating a 30-minute podcast episode. So I'll first have several time blocks ranging from 30 minutes to 60 minutes, where I will write the episode scripts during that time block. So in total, there will be maybe like three hours, maybe max four hours total of like time blocks spread out the week where I will be working on writing the scripts. And then I will record my episode in a, uh, a 30 to 40 minute max, like sitting. And again, like I will pause my recording every now and then to breathe, drink water, cough on my phlegm, etc. And then I resume recording. And this is how, again, I'm able to record in a way that does not require editing uh, for both the audio and video of the, the podcast. And then after that, I will spend maybe five minutes, max 10 minutes, adding on the intro and outro like jingles. And also just making sure that the volume of the audio is more or less consistent throughout the, the whole episode. And then I export the file. And then I spend maybe a max of like 10 minutes uploading and publishing the episode on both my um, audio podcasting platforms and also YouTube. So the total estimated time for a 30 minute podcast episode is about maybe five hours, like max for an entire week. And bear in mind, I script my entire episode word for word for word. So if you actually choose to do more bullet point style or something that's more brief in general, and you're more speaking off the cuff, then you're going to like, ideally, you would be spending even less time than I do on a weekly basis for a 30 minute episode, right? 
And again, the key thing to note here is that the five hours is spread out throughout like maybe four or five days of the week. Because personally, my energy styles does not work well in long, intense sprints. I'm definitely more of like a work in moderation type of person. So the takeaway I want to offer here is observe your energy levels and know how you work best, right? So for example, like consider how much downtime and rest or recovery time you need throughout your days and literally schedule it in your calendar. Like if you know that you need recovery time after a, a coaching call with a client on Zoom, then don't schedule anything during your recovery time. Like sure, there are times when we need to leverage like pockets of time so that we can get things done and be productive, quote unquote, but just also consider leveraging pockets of time so that you can manage your energy and also recover. And one more thing to consider is to also know the variables that influence your energy levels and hence influence your work style. So that includes, for example, how much sleep you're getting or the food and beverages that you're consuming or who you're spending your time with, how much movement or exercise you have in a week, the the brain intensiveness of the things that you're doing throughout your, your day and so on. And this might sound like super like basic and like one-on-one, but like it sure as hell does impact your energy levels and hence your overall capacity to get things done, right? So finally is the final thing I want to say here is there's no like better quote unquote or like more optimal work style is not like the first one is better than the, the second one or like the second one's better than the first one the grass isn't greener on the other side when it comes to this because all of us we just want to get things done right so all I'm trying to say here is please pay attention to your energy levels and how you operate most efficiently and start working according to your energy work style and when you continue to do this over time, you will get faster and faster and more efficient at your weekly video podcasts. All right. So I also want to just say that the common thread among all of the three tips we've discussed so far is that in theory, it sounds simple, but actually putting these tips into practice, like week after week, episode after episode, that's a whole other story right? But I promise that you will get faster and faster at applying these three tips and get even more efficient at producing your weekly video podcasts over the long run, as long as you're committed to practicing every single week, month after month. And just for fun, I actually, for this episode script, I actually went back and looked at my Google calendar from 2020 when I was just starting out my audio only podcast. And also in around like quarter three, 2022, when I was starting to do a video podcast. Okay, so here are some fun things I wanna share. Okay, so back in 2020, on the week of October 19th, episode four of the Side Hustle Club podcast, which was called Comparing Yourself with Other Entrepreneurs, the episode that was published was 20 minutes. But the total time that it took for this 20-minute episode, like the, the total content creation time was six hours. And then on the week of October 26, 2020, for episode number five, which is called How to Get Your First Paying Client, and the episode length, the final episode, was about 31 minutes. This episode took a whopping 13 hours for me to produce that week. <laughs> and then in 2022, so just as a comparison, in 2022, on the week of June 13th, for episode number 83, oh, wait, wait, I just want to make a quick disclaimer here and say that episode 83 is an audio only episode. So this was still right before I started doing a video podcasting, which was starting at episode 87. So just for a comparison for episode 83, which is audio only, it was a 21 minute episode. This whole thing only took four hours that week. And also on the week of September 19th, 2022, for episode 94, which was a 41 minute episode, it was called Managing Mental Health and Life on Top of Your Business. This 41 minute episode, and bear in mind, it was video also, took five hours. So again, in 2020, 
the episodes took six hours up to 13 hours whereas in 2022 i also added a video component and it was taking maybe five hours on average right so what we can take away from this comparison is that you will get more confident in your skill of creating podcast content whether it's audio only or both audio and video which also means that you will get faster at creating long-form content over time which also means that you can create even more or even longer episodes over time. And I know that for the podcasters, specifically the podcasters listening to this episode, I know that you are also hoping that your podcast will not only like grow in in terms of its audience in the short term, but you also hope that your podcast is the reason why you will attract clients and other really incredible opportunities into your business career and life in the long term right? And that's why you want to know how to get better and faster at podcasting and being a even better communicator of your thought leadership and just being a better content creator overall. And honestly, whatever your dreams are for both the short term and or the long term, just remember that the common underlying thread here is that for any of your big audacious dreams, just remember that you can actually start laying down the foundation for each of them right now, right? So inside the Thought Leader Club, we are going to start laying down the foundation for those dreams today by teaching you how to build a body of work and becoming known for your thought leadership. And in just four months, you are going to not only become a much more efficient and skilled content creator, but you will also develop a set of skills and tools that will help you become known for your unique thought leadership and build your career as a thought leader Build a body of work that not only showcases the depth of your thinking and the caliber of your skills, but also compels the best fit clients to want to work with you and also to proudly become known for something. Because when you're known, when you're known for something that then attracts both clients and opportunities that you thought were once so out of reach for someone like you, but now you know it's possible because you see how good you are at not only what you do, but how good you are at communicating your thought leadership. Okay, so this is... A, uh, this is what we do inside the Thought Leader Club. And again, our first ever cohort is starting on November 1st, 2023. So for the details of the program, you can head on over to CherylTheory.com slash program. And this is where you can submit your application to join the next round. And also for us to book a discovery call to chat more about your goals for this year and next year and how building a body of work and becoming known for your unique thought leadership will fit into your long-term three-year vision and goals. Okay, I'll see you inside the Thought Leader Club. Sounds good? Awesome. Let's get to work.